So today I'm going to do my best to try and build what's called an Ohio chicken brooder. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Move the fence across. Yeah. Oh, we got the cows. Hello and Wallace. So today I'm going to do my best to try and build what's called an Ohio chicken brooder. The premise of it is you build like a 4x4 four four with a floor and inside is like a 2x2 two two structure that they can get in and out of at the bottom and it traps the heat so it's kind of like a little heat bubble. It keeps them warm uh, but they can also leave it to cool off or just explore and start to you know, get used to different temperatures. So I, I picked up some first cuts from a good neighbor of ours. I'm going to do my best to try and get those as the siding. We'll see. I don't know how well they're going to work, but I'm going to try to pick out some good ones and see what we can do with it. So we recently just ordered 60 meat birds, 60 broilers come into our farm. And I don't have a brooder to put them in yet. I've got this reflective insulation board to build the inside where it's going to reflect the heat and keep it warm inside for them. Yeah, where's the extension? Ben's doing a thorough inspection. <laughs> Brand new and it's already freaking tangled. I know. Brand new and they already come tangled. Pre-tangled. Pre Pre-tangled, just for you. What'd you do? No, oh, just some kickback. So while we were enjoying a bit of an early spring, I had to get going and get this thing built. I didn't have a lot of experience uh, woodworking or carpentry. I think the last thing I did was probably back in school. But I'm just learning as I go. I'm, I'm kind of winging it, making some adjustments as I'm putting it together. But the big thing is, if I could pull this off, that could be enough meat for us for an entire year. What? It sounds more like it. <laughs> Doing the same thing she did. Do your best, Moo, then. No! <laughs> she looked. Did she? Yes. <laughs> Willow! It's funny. Decisions, decisions. I'm not sure that this is going to be deep enough. Maybe a bit tall, but I wanted to keep it out of range of the dogs when they go outside and. I don't know, the odd skunk or something, right? So now, we gotta put bracers in here. So you can put it in the floor. 
Got the wood over there for the floor. And then I'll use some of that first cut on the outside here to give us a bit of a wall so we can have a deep thing, deep uh, bedding in there. Oh, it's raining now. <laughs> Oh, you can hear it. Hi. <laughs> I was trying to get a shot. So much for that early spring. That rainstorm turned into a snowstorm, hopefully the last of the season. We still have a month before we have to have that brooder ready for the chickens to arrive. Come on, Wallace, let's go. Here they come. Break down some of those bushes when you're <laughs> on your way. <laughs> Bulldoze through those trees. Can hear them. There he comes. <laughs> come oh, there's the Mabel. Now. Mabel's on the right. For the full week now that we've had them yeah, figuring out the systems. Come on, Willow, Try get some food. Side, there you go. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> Hi. She sees my lettuce. Hey guys. Yeah, what is that? Mm. It's interested. He's looking at it. <laughs> oh, he wants it. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, take <laughs> both of those, please. Thank you. Fence is off. Accidentally got some <laughs> apart. <laughs> okay, bud. <laughs> Is he scared of you? Oh. Get some good potassium, apparently. Yeah. Willow or uh, Mabel's eating it. It's in her mouth. <laughs> oh. Perfect. I'm going to give them a little snack. Just keep them tame. Got all our fencing here ready for the next project. You only see two? There should be three. This was here already like previously and they're not really using it as a shelter but it's kind of like provides a little bit of protection. You guys. Highland cows, in the research we've done, they don't need really any shelter. Their design, their DNA are built for Highland, Scotland weather. So heavy rain, snow, wind. And they just enjoy being out in the pasture, in the forest. Here they are. take a cow long to find the food. Yeah, I haven't touched it over here. Untouched hay. We'll figure it out eventually. Hey, here it comes. This isn't a delivery service, you know? <laughs> they think it is. Deliver it right to their mouth. <laughs> Did we show off the electric fence? We cut and blazed like a little bit of a trail on both sides of some main trees that we thought we'd use uh, within our property line. Like it's, this is right on the edge of our property line. You can see the orange flags there. We just bought these insulators off of Amazon. It's like a hundred pack and then strung out the wire on the Jenny, what's it called? The Jenny 
spinner? Spinning Jenny? Spinning Jenny. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> it worked out really well. Oh, got kicked, <laughs> Bubba. Well, yeah, you can't stand behind a bull. <laughs> I just noticed she was back there. Dude, are you okay? Aww. He didn't even yelp. No. You gotta watch yourself. He reacted pretty quick, but he let her know, like, Aww. I don't like you back there. <laughs> oh, he's scratch. scratching that. It's nice that the Highland cows are typically more friendly. He's got horns, but I don't know. I feel like I've dealt with bison in Elk Island Park. So <laughs> I don't feel as bad or timid being around him. Hi, hey, Willow. Just scratch your head. Hi, hey, uh, Baba. Just scratch her between her shoulders, around her shoulder area. She likes that too. Is by the time family comes to visit, that they can walk up to these guys and get a scratch and pet. Mm -hmm. It's Auntie Mel's coming too. Oh, Auntie Mel would just love these cows. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's like you survived. Welcome back. Okay, so that tree there literally just came down behind us. That huge <laughs> tree that's like leaning right there. What is that? Is that a... It's an evergreen. Some sort of evergreen. I think it might be fur. It literally just split and fell in a wind gust behind us. We heard it crack. Hugely loud crack. And then it fell. Wow. Yeah. Go we'll find the spring. That's insane. Yeah. It wasn't even that big of a wind gust. That's supposed to be for brooding chickens, not kittens. Doing. I'm just barely hanging on here. <laughs> the sparks scare me. <laughs> no, I almost got it. All right, so after many delayed days, finally have this Frankenstein of my version of an Ohio brooder set up. So the idea is the chicks can go in and out of here. There's my fist just to prove the size that chickens will fit in and out of there. The floor, you can actually lift this up. So when it comes to cleaning at the end of the season, you can take that floor right out, clean out all the uh, the deep uh, pine shapings and stuff. And the idea with this little space dome is that it holds the heat on the inside. So the chickens can go in if they are feeling too cool and they need to heat up, or if they're too hot in there, then they can come out into this open space. Now. There is also a top to this, as you can see. We've got a door on the front, a vent there. We've got a plastic roof, and this is going to fit on top of here with a hinge on the back so you can actually lift it up and close it at the end of the season. Uh, I'm going to put some, some cross beams on the bottom here for extra support. But yeah, the way that you would heat this, normally people would have a, uh, a heat lamp you have like a space on top with the heat lamp over top of it. 
but the way that we're doing it, these tongs, that attaches like so, and it heats the wood underneath. Obviously, there's plenty of room up here so that it's not touching the wood, it won't catch it on fire, but it heats the floor, seats the floor underneath this here, keeps them warm. So hopefully I can get it to 95 degrees. We'll do some tests. If not, then I'll have to get maybe an internal uh, heater in there as well so that we can keep it at 95 for those chicks. But most people that have these Ohio brooders have them inside in a shed or a barn or something. We don't have that option. We're starting with new land, so we don't have the infrastructure for that. So you got to improvise. And this is my first crack at improvising and building something like this. And uh, there's probably not a simple or a single uh, squared corner on this thing, but I think it'll do. Here's hoping. So inside, you'll see the little uh, Ohio style um, house I've made out of reflective insulation. So we can take a look and see how, how warm it gets. This is cool. It's got a bit of a slope on the roof. We want it to be hot, <laughs> not cool. Oh, <laughs> funny. Um, I'm going to put some blocks under here because mm -hmm. it does need to be a bit more of a tilt because it kind of flattens off towards the back in the middle. Mm -hmm. That way it, it runs off. Otherwise, when I go to pick it up, I get a bit of runoff there. It's my Frankenstein. <laughs> we'll see if it works. We got chickens coming next week, so crossing our fingers. a little tight. Just put some sort of handle on here so we can open and close it. No, no handle. Oh. Got a lot of trees picked up. Oh, there goes another tree. This place is going to be transformed. 